Welcome back guys, Proto Bro here, infamous brother to Mega Bro, and we won! Look, we can, major victory, means we won the game. I will go through that in a second how we did it, but, uh, <laughs> that was awesome. I, uh, wasn't quite sure if we were going to take DC, but we did, and it led to getting 192 morale, I think we needed 185 to win. Did it! So, we got a score of 97.63, opponent got 56.73, I believe this is your victory points, and we'll go through all that right now, but here you can see... Lee is signing the document, Grant's over here. Uh, I believe this is Appomattox Courthouse, uh, the actual scene of it, but really what's happening here is Lee is signing the agreement for the Confederacy to split away officially from the Union and forever be an independent state, so. All right, so how did we do it? Uh, let's go over the overall victory screen here first, and then I'll just give you the lay of the land, all that stuff. So overall victory screen, we took DC. So <clears throat> that was worth 50, we took that. Um, Objective list obviously was also Tucson, Baltimore, and San Antonio, or San Antonio, sorry, not San Antonio, Tucson and uh, Baltimore. But we took almost all of these places, so that was huge um, in terms of victory points. And then, uh, as you can see, we were getting 97, 63 total, we are getting 63 a turn. Um, he was getting... How many was he getting? I don't know, but anyways, <clears throat> it's not relevant. Foreign intervention was 23. That's actually pretty high, to be honest with you. Uh, we ended the war in uh, July of 64. Very cool. Um, <clears throat> that would have been about the time that Grant was somewhere in Virginia, south of the, uh, the wilderness. We took 20... Let's see. We took... Wow. Okay. Two... <laughs> I didn't know if I read that right. That's why it took me a second. 204... 1,800 prisoners. That's insane. I I didn't. I don't even know how we accomplished that. That's crazy. I think we got a lot of those in DC, to be honest with you. Um, we lost 156,675 troops. We uh, killed uh, the U.S. Uh, lost 271,836. So between that and uh, prisoners of war, his casualties were. 475-ish thousand troops, so that's pretty crazy. I don't know how many of our prisoners he took because it didn't show, us, show that to us, but his morale is only 19, so that's why he gave in. Ours was uh, 192. Um, and then, uh, as you can see, change from objectives under control, 50. Change from surrenders and disband to uh, changes from battle. So we got 52, 58 morale that uh, that turn I'll show you the the battles actually there's a big battle against Beauregard over in the west that we won um, actually against Grant of all people so here's the lay of the land now remember he was down here uh, in uh, Alexandria he actually never took it ironically enough that's pretty funny I didn't really have much here um, and didn't have anything really between him and Richmond but the thing is he would have had to go fight each one of these to get down there uh, and then by the time we got down there I would have had this guy pretty pretty well reinforced um, I had troops being built and as well as being railed over so Richmond would have been pretty well secured, um, at least in time for me to decide whether I could take DC uh, or if I had to double back. Now, you know, I did leave this area open. I was debating, you know, whether I wanted to do that or not. Uh, ultimately, I did not. I'm glad I didn't because that meant that I had three core. You know, I had uh, Longstreet, uh, Lee, as well as DH Hill, all like right here to, to, to do the assault. Um, Jackson obviously still held on up here. And uh, he had these troops here, but then I was able to also reinforce uh, Smith with more troops just in case. So I was in good shape there. Um, you know, I kept tearing up the rail lines up here to keep him from bringing down reinforcements and troops, and so I still have guys in the back there. And uh, let's go through these battles just right quick. So there's our, our victory. Um, this is the one uh, against Beauregard. So look at that. I mean, he lost 31,000 troops, and we only lost 6,000. I mean, craziness. It was a six-hour battle. Uh, at first, it looked a little, little dicey because of... Um, <laughs> like I got the, the enemy's national morale has been shattered. Uh, they, they really want us to know this, by the way. They, that's why it's, it's still there. Um, is that this right here? No. But let's see here. Uh, we only had two divisions uh, to start. And he had all these divisions. So it wasn't good to, to start off with. Um, and we inflicted 204, but we also suffered a, a fair amount of hits too. Um, but then what happens is finally our, some of our reinforcements come in. Uh, Forest enters the battle, and then uh, I believe we've also got our other core. So now we have both our core there, and we've got everybody there, and then uh, things uh, as they do. So, uh, pretty crazy though. 31,000, and I'm not sure why 
um, he didn't flee. Like, it's not red red, it's just orange. So I'm not sure why he wasn't able to get away. But, worked for me. So we got a huge morale swing for that. I think we got four from this alone. We killed 30,000 of his troops uh, and only lost uh, 6,000. We were, we're really well entrenched though, too. So, uh, you know, we had uh, was this entrenchment level of seven, I think. But anyway, so yeah, we really kicked the crap out of him over here. Uh, and then we had uh, Forrest, who was also attacked. And uh, this was the remnants of, I think, the uh, the attack from previously. It kicked his butt there. Kind of a non-factor. I was just trying to get the, the mine over there. This here. And then, uh, let's see here. Let me go find uh, DC. So, United States surrendered to us Prince George, uh, Ms. Uh, Maryland, losing 8 units, which this is DC. Gained 240 victory points and 2 morale. Uh, we surrendered... Uh, the garrison surrendered to 6,000 prisoner, prisoners. Um, Alright, so let me see if there's anything else I want to show you before I just kind of go over things just, just right quick. Yeah, 3 morale from uh, that, that battle with Beauregard that, that we won. And then another three from that was from the uh, the kind of follow-on battle. Lots of people can promote now. Like this is gonna be doing good. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So and then uh, you know we had all this money too that we could have burned um, this next turn because I was running low on troops. So as you can see here, <clears throat> we were starting to really hurt. I mean we had 92 replacements we needed for elite, 715 replacements for line infantry, and we we're completely out. Couldn't keep up with that. That's why I took out the, all this money because I was just gonna pump it all into this right here. All these 222 on cavalry, so we definitely uh, got bled pretty significantly moving on DC, but obviously it was worth it. Um, as you can see, here's the, the 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 final line of line of battle here in terms of our, our, our placement. Um, could have pushed up into P Pittsburgh here. I was kind of thinking about it, but I thought it was more important just to make sure we held the line over here. So I did shift troops that way, because uh, again, it's you know taking DC is the way to win the game, not um, taking Pittsburgh or any other territories. Uh, held on to Kentucky. He still had Eastern Kentucky, but uh, we're here. So probably what's going to happen is you're going to have two Kentuckys now. And uh, you're going to have Eastern Kentucky, which is uh, part of the United States, and then Western Kentucky, which is part of the, now the Confederate States of America. Uh, we took over a lot of Illinois, so I think probably the same thing's going to happen. We're going to hold on to Illinois. We'll have Western Illinois, um, and they'll have Eastern Illinois. So uh, we didn't get uh, Chicago, which is, I believe, up here, but that's okay. Uh, held on to St. Louis. So St. Louis, Missouri, basically the entire state of Missouri uh, is pretty much ours with the exception of uh, Lexington, which really is a non-factor in my opinion. Um, and, uh, let me do the states here. So there you go. So as I can see where we're at. So we got down here, right? So this river right here. Uh, so that's what we have of Missouri. We have a lot of Illinois. Um, yeah, we actually have almost all of Illinois. Just that little part up here is the only part we don't have in Illinois. Uh, and then they have most of uh, Indiana. And we have uh, of uh, Kentucky here. Actually, I want to say we have all of Kentucky. No, we don't. Sorry, got my map screwed. Okay, here's Lexington right here. Okay. All right. So, how do we do it? Let me just uh, conclude this wonderful let's play with a uh, one. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, you found it entertaining. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Um, but then uh, also too, how do we do it? So if I recall correctly, because I've been playing this one, this let's play a little while, just really aggressive. I mean, in '61 and early '62, Confederacy has the edge in terms of the initiative and the troops and the generals. So I, uh, if I recall correctly, I went uh, over here in the west. I moved on Cairo really fast with uh, with uh, Sidney Johnson, um, and I took it. And then I was like, you know what? St. Louis looks a little weak. Let's just move on and see what happens. And we took it. It was crazy. We totally took it. Uh, we moved up pretty aggressively in Springfield and just plunked our butts down there and hoped we could hold it. And we were we were able to. My experience as a Union is it, it is somewhat difficult to take Springfield uh, early in the game. So, so we took St. Louis and then we're like, okay, well now what do we do? Um, Kentucky, I think, joined our side, and so uh, we then uh, moved very rapidly uh, to seize Kentucky. So I know we took um, Munfordville and Louisville pretty quickly. And then uh, we aggressively um, held on to this area right here and had that for most of the game. And then once we took this in St. Louis, that's when we just decided to start pushing east to see how much uh, territory, how much of a front we could set up as like a buffer to our, you know, our inner, our inner uh, Confederate areas. 
uh, you know, rather fight the war on their their turf and their land than ours. That's really how we did over in the west, and then just try to use the rail line um, as best as possible to ferry troops, and then use um, Taylor here to train up uh, militia into conscripts as well as provide just general um, training to, to troops. Over in the uh, east, um, there wasn't a whole lot happening over here for a while. Uh, I do, you know, I know we moved pretty quickly up on to uh, Alexandria. Uh, we actually attacked Alexandria, took that, and then held a front here behind the the Rappahannock, or is it the Shenandoah? I think it's Rappahannock right here. Um, and then, uh, oh, here's the Rappahannock. Sorry. What, what river is this? Uh, this is not the James. I don't know. Maybe it's the Shenandoah River. Anyways. So we held up here for quite some time and then was aggressive to hold on to Harper's Ferry and then use this rail line because once you take this rail line here at Harper's Ferry, it gives you a, a nice little inroad into Western Virginia. And then as you saw, we then used our little buffer here at Western Virginia to kind of harass and freak him out over here by pushing up towards Pittsburgh and making him react accordingly. But ultimately, and here's really what the, the game changer was, he attacked us a few times, but he had to cross the river, right? And then when we moved up onto Frederick, Maryland, again, he would have to attack us across the river to accomplish that. Uh, holding these areas with a large body of troops plus entrenchment makes it very hard for the enemy to push you out. Plus, as you saw, the way we moved into uh, DC, it gives you this nice little kind of uh, echelon sort of style movement where you move your, your far left core over down where we put Jackson, your next core, you know, down right in here in the middle. And then with the uh, long street, we actually came down and up. But honestly, what we could have just done is just gone straight across, kept him here, attacked Maryland, uh, or attacked DC. Uh, he would have moved to the sound of guns, hopefully, and gone. But the problem with that, and the reason I didn't do it, was I don't want to risk moving to the sound of guns for something as big as DC, right? I just want to make damn sure every core I got is going to be in that battle because he had a big number of troops there. That's why I moved uh, long street down and up. Um, Honestly, it didn't really matter which direction I moved him, though. I could have moved him up here and then down. Um, didn't really matter much. Um, so just keeping that in mind. But the, the big takeaway was he had such a large body of troops there, you don't want to risk a core not moving to the sound of guns. And so you want to get as many troops in that one particular region where you're going to fight that battle as possible. Uh, with the exception of Jackson, who was really up here to act as a buffer to keep like this guy right here, um, Meade, and then whoever else would try and come down to, to rescue DC. Keep them off my heels at least just, just a little bit. So, um, beyond that, you know, I just loaded up uh, ships up in the blockade area for for money. Um, got a little bit of cash each turn. Um, I didn't really care what was going on down here in Texas because he wasn't really doing anything. So it was really a waste of, of his troops. And then over here in the far west, um, and I could have been more aggressive, but really it, it didn't really seem too advantageous for me to do it. But the big thing was getting a supply wagon. You really need the supply wagon over here. Um, which then gives you the versatility to move up here or go across and attack here. My big thing was I burned his fort that was right here, which made it harder for him to, to push forward. Um, and I could have decided to go after Eastern Arizona if I decided to. And then uh, putting down partisans up in these uh, little mine areas to get a few of those. I think I still have one. Yeah, I'm still holding the one over here. Um, which gives you 10,000 cash each turn. And then I took this one as well, so this is 10,000 cash. Alright everybody, uh, with that, thank you so much for watching. Congrats to us for, for winning. Um, wasn't quite sure I was going to be able to pull it off there for a second with DC. It was looking a little precarious, but we did it. And uh, with that, thank you so much and have a blessed, wonderful day. And thanks for watching, guys.